by 2025, it is predicted that electric car sales will outstrip diesel and petrol ones combined. That's over a million new EVs a year. The technologically driven Tesla company was the first to see the electric light over a decade ago and everybody else has been playing catch up. Barely a week goes by without a new EV hitting the streets. This e-tron sportback is just one. So our motoring future will consist of plugging our cars into the mains to charge their batteries. Or will it? Well, that depends on who you ask. Because, although many agree that electricity is the power source of tomorrow, the creation of that electricity is another matter. You see, it's not just battery packs that can power an electric car. Take this, for example, the Toyota Mirai. It looks like a traditional car, and it's got an electric motor that drives the wheels, just like with the Audi and other EVs. But this car doesn't have a massive battery pack as its power source. The Mirai uses hydrogen. Let's get our chemistry brains on. Although hydrogen gas is flammable, you don't ignite it to generate the power as you would petrol. Instead, electricity is generated as a result of a chemical reaction that occurs when hydrogen gas, oxygen and an electric current are combined within the fuel cell. Put simply, this is generating electricity on the move, whereas batteries release stored energy. There are no gears and the ride is really comfortable and the weight distribution is 50% at the front and 50% at the rear, which means cornering is... Highly acceptable. There's a big infotainment screen here, a smaller one straight ahead of me for all the more important driving details. It is Toyota's usual high standard of fit and finish. So all in all, very good. However, while the Mirai might have a sporty, low-slung shape, it's no racing machine. For starters, it's quite big, almost five metres in length. And to put that into some sort of perspective, the average UK parking space is 4.8 metres in length. The Mirai tips the scales at nearly two tonnes. Which is about 300 kilos more than a petrol BMW 5 Series. And then there's the power. The hydrogen cell produces the equivalent of a disappointingly low 182 horsepower. And even though there is a little battery booster pack, 0 to 62 happens in nine seconds, notably slower than a 5 Series. But outright performance isn't really the point of this car. The point is emissions, or lack of, because the only thing that emerges from the tailpipe is water. Yes, all that chemical wizardry results in nothing more harmful than H2O. And then there's the range, because the Mirai can potentially do 400 miles between fill-ups. At £50,000, the Toyota isn't exactly cheap, but you'd pay at least that for a long-range battery EV. Plus, you can refuel it in about the same time as a petrol car. So, what's the catch? Well, for starters, hydrogen cars aren't as cheap to run as battery ones. It costs around £70 to fill the Mirai's voluminous 122-litre tank, which means that hydrogen cars are a lot more expensive to fuel up than battery-powered EVs. But that's not the biggest problem. Not by a long way. The UK's first ever public hydrogen filling station opened here in Swindon in 2011. It was supposed to be the trailblazer that kick-started the hydrogen revolution. And now, ten years on, there are a dozen similar stations. No, not 12 more in Swindon, 12 more in the whole of the country. And to put that into perspective, the number of petrol stations is nearly 8,500. So why is that number so tiny and why aren't more being built? Well, it's a classic catch-22. People won't buy hydrogen cars until there's enough places to fill them up. And suppliers won't build the stations until there are enough cars. 
But perhaps a solution will come through a back door of sorts. This vision in grey is the Wright Bus Hydroliner. It is the world's first double-decker hydrogen bus. It fills up in just eight minutes and has a range of 280 miles. And instead of getting behind the wheel, I'm going to go for a ride. Buses generally tool around local routes all day and then return back to the same depot every night. So, providing there is a hydrogen fuel tank at the base, then they're fine. And as filling stations for these multiply, it should open up opportunities for cars to regas as well. In fact, once the refueling infrastructure improves, it could become the perfect solution for everyone who can't charge an EV at home. This is my stop. <laughs> oh, I love doing that. Off I go.